Hello, this is simply about networking protocols and today we are talking about port channel, also known as LAC, and dynamic protocol for LAC creation that is LACP. Main information, enough to implement LAC, LACP and all related features, is described in standard IEEE 802.1 AX of 2008. All the link aggregation related information also presented in standard uh, 802.3. Why we need lag at all? Well, sometimes it is possible situation when we need to transmit or we suspect that at some point we need to transmit uh, traffic that is much more than uh, line rate of the single port. Simple solution when we are connecting multiple ports of two devices between and transmitting data there didn't work because uh, there will be a storm. This storm uh, caused that traffic will not run at all. We can try to beat the storm enabling STP but as we talk about uh, STP functionality in STP related video, all except one links will be blocked and again we will receive only one port active. So we need to tell the system that group of ports working as an individual interface. This is actually luck. Luck defines group of ports that are working as individual interface. The main feature of the LAC interface is that traffic cannot be flooded or forwarded between ports that are members of this LAC, of same LAC. Thus, uh, storm and STP now is not an issue, and this LAC can transmit traffic uh, of amount that is sum of line rates of all ports that are active members of this LAC. Very good. By the way, port channel and lock are the same. Uh, some systems and vendors using port channel, some systems and vendors using lock. Doesn't matter. Main feature of the lock is traffic balancing. It means that all traffic that we need to transmit from the lock being balanced, basing on hashing algorithm that is configured for the system for the lock whatever, different configurations possible, and for specific stream of the traffic is selected actual port that will transmit this stream. In case something happens to the port and link is not operational anymore, system will rebalance traffic in the way to send it through different ports that are active members of this lock. In this case, there is no traffic loss. And even more, if more ports will go out and for any reason became inactive, traffic still will be rebalanced and transmit through the remaining ports, well, until one port is left. And when miracle happens and all ports are back, system will rebalance traffic back to use all ports of the lock. Lock is treated by the system as single interface. It means that all ports that are members of the lock, that are active members of the lock, have very little configuration that is related to the port itself. They apply in configuration of the lock. And when on the system we're configuring the lock to be a member of some specific villain, all ports, active members of this lock, now can operate correctly with traffic that is stuck with that specific villain. Same for FDB. As interface behind which uh, device with specific MAC is placed and should receive traffic in specific villain, we are pointing out a lag interface and system by hashing algorithm and balancing select specific port that will transmit this traffic. By the way, talking about lock numbers, the lock numbers are important on the particular system. So it means that system one 
can have only one lock one one lock two lock one lock three and so on system two can have only one lock one one lock two one lock three and so on but those system doesn't care uh, about number of uh, connected locks so lock one on system one can be connected to lock one on system two to lock three on system two or to lock 22 or system 2 it doesn't matter routing table again as uh, as we talk already in uh, video about interfaces if lock can apply ip in some specific subnet this lock can become l3 interface and process l3 traffic uh, and participate in routing then for system 1 lock of the system to the has specific ip 33 15 uh, 165 76 is next hop and it's in system one's uh, routing table that is also known as fib it means that this is the address of the next device that should receive traffic in specified subnets for further processing that's simple and talking about stp again stp treats lock as individual interface and if lock is part of the stp topology it needs to be disabled because lock creating loop full lock will be disabled it cannot be situation when some active members ports active members of the lock are disabled and some are not all will be disabled now traditionally if lock is created and managed by administrator this is static lock it means administrator creates instance of the lock adds members remove members put some configuration uh, and so on and so forth static lock has one main issue it doesn't care until ports up and they are up if neighbor ports are up hashing algorithm will use all active ports that are members of the lock for a hashing and if administrator or user or whoever for any reason put links to different system so in system three instead of two lock on system one doesn't know about this and doesn't care about this all ports are uh, participating in balancing and uh, device three will receive part of the traffic that was designed to device two and we'll actually we will have a mess to resolve this and to resolve uh, to automate managing of the uh, members of the lock and so on and so forth dynamic lock was invented and dynamic uh, protocol for dynamic lock management was invented that is lacp for dynamic lock administrator creates the instance of the lock without any members and specifies on ports that they can participate in dynamic lock main parameters there are much more but main parameters are priorities and keys port can become member of the lock on the same system only if they have same key in this way administrator can manage which port are potentially candidates to be members of lock one lock two lock three and so on also once port announced as um, lacp enabled port it means port that could participate in some dynamic lock lacp protocol starts sending packet here again lacp uh, protocol is not 100% dialog it more likely transmits information uh, to notify the partner and modifies own configuration based on the information received from the partner but lacp pdu lacp packet besides any other fields lots of fields have those sets that are important actor information this is information configured on our system partner information this is configuration that we know about the partner this is truth about both sides 
LACP contains both those informations. After receive, upon receive, our actor information or in actor information of the left side device will be added into partner information of uh, right side device and partner information of the left side device will be compared with actor information of the right side device and if it differs it means there is some missynchronization between our devices on the right device enabled uh, processes required to um, enforce synchronization okay after receiving or exchanging this information main again main for port selection fields are actor system identifier uh, identifier id actor k partner system id and partner k actor k this is k uh, configured on the port and it should be same as on the lab partner key this is key of the partner interface configured there as its actor key and then ports that have same key as a log and has all the same information between themselves can be members of the same log. It means that after receiving all this information, this port can become member of the log because actor key matched. This port also can um, join this log because their information is the same. And this port cannot join this log because it differs with key. It cannot be a member of this log. Okay. Similar on this side. After exchanging all the information, those ports can become the member of the log that is configured on the device. But third port cannot join this log because it has different partner K. It different. It connected to another instance. Let's say. So how this resolves the main problem of the static lock? Simply, actor system and actor key forbids the ports that are connected into run system or to run port to join the lock. If interface is connected to another system, it cannot join the lock because it has different set of the key factors. Okay, of those four fields and cannot be selected as a member valid for aggregation into lock. This is how we resolved the main problem of the static lock. That simple. Thank you. Have a great day.